Mathematics is an enormous field, and like any other mathematician, Alice Roth could only work in a small corner of it. But the work she did was remarkable and respected. If in those times she was able to achieve as much as she did, she must have been a truly exceptional woman. She was a very, very deep scientist, very profound and extremely careful. Doing research at, at really high level after retirement, this is really something exceptional. I mean, I don't know any other example. I got to know her because a colleague of mine asked me to referee the first paper that she wrote after retirement. My first impression, and, and that was reinforced uh, as I got to know her, was that she was a, a very intelligent person, very, very sharp, nothing artificial, nothing at all artificial about her, very natural. Alice Roth was born on February 6, 1905 in Bern, the second of three children in the Roth Landolt family. The family moved when Alice was six, first to Zurich, then to Zollikon, above Lake Zurich. I think as she was lucky that she grew up in a family that supported her and her choices, and in a family that was relatively well off. She had access to the best schools and, and so, but you know, many other women had that, and yet she was able to make really something out of it. After attending primary school in Zollikon, Alice Roth traveled to Zurich every day to attend the higher girls' school there. At that time, girls were not permitted to attend a gymnasium. It was at secondary school that her interest in mathematics began. Even before she took her final exams, Alice Roth had decided she wanted to study mathematics. After spending a year at a domestic science school in Thun at her mother's insistence, Alice Roth studied mathematics at ETH Zurich from 1925 to 1929. She got a diploma, then she got a master's degree, then she went to teach for several years. But um, she realized that if she wanted to be taken really seriously, even as a teacher, she had to have a PhD. While working as a substitute teacher at the girls' school in Zurich and elsewhere, she was also working on her thesis, supervised by Professor George Polya. She submitted the thesis, entitled Properties of Approximations and Radial Limits of Meromorphic and Entire Functions, in 1938. Alice Holt was interested in these two subjects, complex numbers and the relationship with complex numbers and plane geometry. So just as usual numbers correspond to points on a line, complex numbers correspond to points on the plane. Alice Roth was able to do something which almost nobody could do at all anything with before, and that was to work with areas that are unbounded, that go off to infinity, like a strip, an infinite strip. She studied on which sets certain functions, certain class of functions can be approximated by better functions. Actually, she found uh, an example of a set where uh, a function that is continuous, so there is some kind of properties, cannot be approximated by better functions. Alice Roth found this set on a disk from which an infinite number of holes are cut out. This would later become known as the Swiss cheese set. So she found a, what's known as a counterexample to, to some property. And uh, in some sense, it requires a special type of, of, of mathematical brain. Because it's not just that you know what, what you want to prove, uh, and then you find a way to prove it. Uh, it's you suspect that something is not true. But then to be really, really sure that you cannot prove it, you have to find an example that shows that uh, some assumptions are true, but the conclusion you might want are not true. When a mathematician comes out who is non-conformist in this sense, proves that everybody was wrong uh, in their guess. That is very striking and very important. And uh, Alice Roth did this. 
In recognition of this breakthrough, Alice Roth received a doctoral title, the first woman to do so in the Department of Mathematics at ETH Zurich. And to honor her outstanding research, the rectorate awarded Alice Roth the ETH Silver Medal. Which is a medal that's only given to the very best PhD thesis in all fields uh, represented at ETH. And we learned that, in fact, she was the very first woman uh, to get it in any field of research at ETH. Following this academic success, Alice Roth returned to teaching. In 1940, she started working at Humboldtianum, a private school in Bern, where she would remain until her retirement. The high workload prevented her from continuing her research at this time. She was well liked by those she taught, her former pupils recall, giving her the affectionate nickname Rothkäppli. In her lectures, we began to understand that mathematical problems can be solved this way or that way but also in this or yet another manner. She continued to read, even though she wasn't doing research. She continued to read, and she continued to attend seminars at the ETH. This meant that Alice Roth was able to achieve the remarkable feat of returning to research after more than 30 years away. Almost immediately after retiring, she took up her work on the approximation of meromorphic functions once again. I mean, it's like, it's like an athlete. You know, an athlete uh, stopped training for a while and then have to start from, from scratch. It's extremely, extremely difficult and it can be extremely frustrating. And she was determined she did it. I think that this is the most amazing thing about this woman. Alice Roth began to collaborate closely with Paul Gauthier, who invited her to give a guest lecture in Montreal. The first and only time that she traveled abroad in her capacity as a mathematician. She kept researching as long as her health would allow. She completed her final work in the Inselspital Hospital in Bern, just before she died from cancer, on July 22, 1977. I'm, I'm very lucky to have, to have worked with, with Alice Roth. She's certainly one of the very best that I've worked with. She definitely can be a role model, and she should be a role model. I mean, you know, younger women should just look up to, 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 to her, to what she has done. We certainly hope this will encourage uh, as many of them as possible to, if they're interested in mathematics, to try to continue, and, and even when sometimes it seems uh, very hard, uh, that you can nevertheless do it.